The final hookup looks something like this. The pins on the Altera chip come out to a header. Several wires are placed in the header and the grabbers are connected to these wires. These grabbers go to the acquisition cable of the logic analyzer. Now let's return back to the system window. Here we see what the system window looks like after it has performed an acquisition. The listing 1 is basically a spreadsheet of clock signals and the data collected. More information will be discussed on this later. At this point you want to make sure that your module is on. After you do that, click Setup. Always do Setup before you go to Trigger Module. Settings and Setup affect Trigger Module. Here we see the Setup screen. This is where you tell the analyzer which of the many acquisition lines that you intend to hook up to your circuit. Notice that the group names are identical to the connectors. These are merely suggestions and we will change them shortly. The actual probe names cannot be changed. Note that A3, remember this name was found on a connector and was a group of lines 7 down to 0. It also has designations 7 down to 0 and the color codes to match. Clocking can be internal or external. The 4 nanoseconds means that it samples every 4 nanoseconds. For 32,768 times. Multiplying these two numbers together will give you the elapsed time. To figure sampling rate, take 1 over this number. In this case, you have 1 over 4 nanoseconds, which translates to about 250 megahertz. Choosing your sampling rate is done by taking your fastest signal, doubling its speed, and taking 1 over that number. In the case of a 10 kilohertz system, you want to take 20 kilohertz, then 1 over that number. In other words, you would set this to approximately 50 microseconds. The elapsed time of your acquisition is determined by taking this number and multiplying it by your memory depth. Your memory depth is essentially how many samples you've taken. Taking too many is really not a problem in that you can always scan through your data. Now let's go back to the system module. At this point you're going to select Setup. Once you enter Setup, type in your clock, reset, PC, IR, and AC. These are the groups that you want to watch. Under clock you have only one signal. You'll tie that to the connector A20. Reset will be tied at the connector A21. You designate this group down here. A20 is clock, so you have to type in clock here. Resets at A21. Notice our program counter is tied to the connectors A3, 3 down to 0. So A3, 3 down to 0 is PC3, PC2, PC1, PC0. If you click on the area that you're interested in up here, such as IR, and we've typed in A3, 7 down to 4, it automatically shows you by putting X's which ones are active on this particular line. Notice there are dots on these other lines, and X's only on the lines that are on the highlighted area. Once you've set up your signal designations, you want to check that A3 and A2 are actually connected to your workbench. We're going to check to see if there's activity on A3 and A2 actually coming in. To do that, you want to go up and show activity. Note here that A3 and A2 are showing activity. C3 and C2 are not. Once you've verified that the correct connectors are connected, return to your setup. After you finish setup, you return to the system window. From there you'll select trigger. Trigger will take you to the trigger window. The trigger tells the logic analyzer when to start acquisition. Since we want to begin our acquisition when we hit reset, 
we want to set up our trigger so that it will start acquisition when reset goes from a high to a low. Since we're dealing with a changing condition, we need to set our trigger up so that it deals with the two different conditions, the high signal going to a low signal. This is essentially a state machine. Basically we need two states, a state that detects when it's one and a state when it detects when it's zero. Note that on the trigger menu we have if something happens, then do something. This is a one state trigger here. If anything happens, then start the trigger. This would cause our logic analyzer to start acquisition as soon as we hit the run button. Basically this is how it works. We come in and say if, and note here we don't want to say if anything, then trigger. We want to say if reset is a one, but reset is one of our groups. So we say if group reset is equal to one, then we have to decide what to do next. Since we're concerned with when reset goes from one to zero, we need another state. So we want to change it to if group reset is equal to one, then don't trigger, but go to another state. Now we need to set state two. This looks very much like the state one. Except note state one says if reset equals one, go to state two. Now we've got if we're in state two, if anything occurs, trigger. But basically we want to check here and make sure that reset is equal to zero. Then trigger. Note our completed state it says if reset is 1, go to 2. At 2, if reset is 0, then trigger. At this point, we're ready to begin. The status of the logic analyzer is indicated here. Presently, it's in an idle state. You have the option of going into a run state. If it's running, it'll say running. If it's idle, it'll say idle. By pushing the run button, we need to wait a second or two. It's starting, and now it's in the running state. While it's running, you push the reset, the buffer fills up, it processes data, and then it'll eventually stop and go back to the idle state. Once you finish the acquisition, you need to call up a new data window. This basically tells it that you want to look at a waveform from the data that you've collected. Basically, tell it you want a waveform, hit next, next, then finish. The next window that pops up will be a waveform window. Now since you're actually looking at a lot of data, go up and click the button that says compress time. Keep compressing time until your data pops into your window. You can sometimes push this button too fast. Eventually your data will pop into the window and then you want to go to the other one and back off just enough until you can actually recognize data in the changing states. If you keep pushing this button too far, you'll eventually come to the end of your data. This is basically your whole buffer. Your trigger is in the center and is usually right on the signal that you told it to change or to stop on. You can basically place this trigger anywhere you want, but it's usually left right in the center. Note that if you're properly zoomed in, your trigger in the center is what causes your data to be collected. Notice PC, which is made up of PC 3, 2, 1, and 0, has numbers. It's basically represented by 1, 1, 1, 1. Here it's 0, 0, 0, 1. 
here, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so forth. Likewise for IR, all the way across. If we scroll over, you can see the more data appears to the right. You've probably noticed that I've got redundancy in PC 0, 1, 2, and 3 when I've already got PC, so I'm going to select each one and just hit delete. I'll do the same thing for IR, IR 7, 6, 5, and 4, and leave IR intact. Select AC 3, 2, 1, and 0 and delete each of those because AC is the aggregate signal. Now all my information is displayed in a rather clean manner. There's a reason why we pick the particular signals from IR. These four bits represent the opcode. It would be nice if instead of 0010 and 0111 we actually saw things like jump and load. This particular logic analyzer allows us to do just that. It allows us to correlate this pattern with a text pattern. To do that we need to reference the symbol table. We go into Properties by clicking the right mouse button. We tell it instead of the radix being binary, we want to go to Symbolic. Under that, we need to tell it then we need a symbol file. And the symbol file that we're going to use is scompla.txt. We'll show you what that looks like in a minute. After we get that, we tell it to apply it to our signals. Say OK. And notice now that we have jump, load, or, and so forth. If we squeeze this a little more and shift a little over to the right, we can actually see our program running in sequence. This is a classic method of using logic analyzers to debug microcontrollers, in our case, a PLD. What we've done here is illustrate the pattern symbol file. This shows the corresponding pattern between 000 and ADD, store and 0001, all the way down to out and 1111. Using this pattern file, the logic analyzer correlates the pattern found in IR and assigns those to the actual opcodes.